What's up, you guys? Welcome back to The Coachable Podcast. I am your host, Tori Gordon. If you're new here, you're in for a treat because I'm not alone. We are in a packed room with some of my absolutely all-time favorite human beings that I cannot wait to introduce you to. So we're just going to jump right into this and let me introduce my family, my friends. Who do we have in the house? We got first, we got Nikki Grace, who has been here before a couple different times. Nikki, a.k.a. Nicoletta, a.k.a. (laughs) Nicaragua. Nikki Tita. Nikki Tita. <laughs> uni. Yeah, Uni. Um, she goes by many names, and but she's loved by all. She is my roommate. She is my partner, my best friend, and she helps make this show what it is. She works like a dog sometimes to make sure this content gets out to you, and She has been the conduit of so much growth and healing um, in my life. So I'm excited to have you back. Mm. We've got Noah in the house, aka Big Dog. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Noah is an incredible drummer, an incredible physical trainer, an incredible men's coach, and just leader in this community. And in our friend group, you are a solid rock uh, for us. Mm -hmm. And you're such a grounded divine masculine presence that really, really creates safety for Mm -hmm. everybody that you're around. And you are just an invitation um, for people to feel what it means to like have a solid presence in their life. Mm. And so welcome to the show. Excited Thank to you. have you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we've got Cammy, Cammy girl, um, our willow tree, our uh, Cammy Newton, our mamita. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many names. Um Cam is also one of my absolute dearest friends in the world. She's She and Noah both are incredible tea ceremonialists and just um, an angel in terms of mm. your presence and your purity. Mm. Um, and your presence is, I think, what speaks, is like what speaks for itself. If people get the chance to experience you and be around you, they enter into a frequency that is is really unique and that I think is so memorable because you are you are a you stand out because you live with such a level of intention in your life that it invites other people to stop and become more aware of what's really important to them. And so I'm excited to have you here too. Mm-hmm. And then last but not least, <laughs> Alex Gonzalez, aka Yodi. This is so good. AKA names I cannot say on this show. Please. Um, but a partner, a mm. best friend in the world, and someone I have learned so much about what true love is, um, what true friendship is, and what it really means to be seen mm-hmm. and to be safe in the presence of the masculine. Mm-hmm. So. Also an incredible men's coach, cultivator of sacred medicine, and just warrior of light. So Mm -hmm. thank you Mm -hmm. for being here. Also been on this show multiple times. If you haven't seen our episode, Alex and I go in depth about our ayahuasca experience and Mm -hmm. how that actually was the birthplace of our friendship and our relationship. And so make sure you go check that out if you want to kind of hear our origin story. But today I wanted to collect all of you. Because you are my family, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I shared this yesterday at Revive Breathwork, um, which is a live event that you all really support putting it on and to Revive Las Vegas and what we're we're building together. And I, I said this yesterday, it's like for so long, for so many years of my life, like I, I craved depth and intimacy and, and real connection and, and family, soul family. And I, you know, for me, my background was, um, one that like, I wanted something I didn't know how to achieve. I craved and hungered and was desperate for 
friendships and relationships that felt like family where I could walk into someone's house and I felt like I was in my own home, you know, where I could feel relaxed. I could feel safe within my own body and within the within the context and the environment that I was in where I didn't have to filter and I didn't have to mask and I didn't have to pretend to be someone I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And there was so much of my life that I didn't feel that way. And last week on this, this podcast, we talked about breaking up with friends and walking away from friendships and, and relationships that aren't aligned for you. Mm -hmm. that don't feel reciprocal that don't feel like you're being met. And now today, this week on the show, I'm like sitting with the people that make me feel most seen. And, you know, I think back to a part of my life where I really thought like, I don't even know if I have one true friend. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. being, you know, and I'm sure all of us have a moment like that where <laughs> I, I remember living in Dallas and going through a really, really challenging time and thinking, I wonder if anyone thinks of me. Like, I wonder if anyone prays for me. I wonder if anyone notices that I'm not around or, you know, because I had just moved from an old city to a new one and I felt really disconnected and isolated. And then fast forward to now, and I'm so supported and held, but I had to go through my own journey to get here and each one of us did. And so I want to first start by talking about what life was like before we all found each other and what our relationships and the safety that's been created here has allowed us to step into and explore and find within ourselves is a byproduct of authentic relating and connection. So yeah, I want to start there and feel free to chime in of like, what was life like? Cause we've only known each other. Y'all Nikki and Cam and I just had a one year friendship anniversary. So <laughs> this is all very new, you know, and yet it feels so ancient and old and like yeah. we've known each other for yep. lifetimes. Mm -hmm. um, but we can all think back to a year ago. So what was life like for you then? What what, what part of your life were you in? And what, how do, what do you feel like you were trying to call in at that time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll start us off. Okay. Uh, a year ago, I was, we had known each other. So Tori and I's friendship was, like, our friendship was, I feel like a year ago was when we really started to become, like, friends. Mm -hmm. Like, we were realizing that we had a really special connection. And I think, I remember thinking back and realizing you were almost like a reference point for me of this is the kind of friend I'm looking for. This is the kind of feeling that I'm seeking in terms of safety, authenticity. I, I don't feel judged by this person. I feel like they meet me. And then when I randomly ran into Cam and Noah at a coffee shop and the randomness of that really started to make me think about the how excited I was like when I met them and I realized that what I was really looking for was friends to do life with mm -hmm. a lot of like what you said we all seek connection we all seek depth and I had realized up until that point I had bounced around from these different friendships that served a purpose for me in some way and but the more that I got to know myself, the more I realized that those friendships weren't aligned. So I did have to start considering what friends do I need to break up with? Where am I not being in my fullest expression? And I remember specifically when Cam and I got coffee, like to actually be like, is this, there's there some friendship here? Like what's happening? We were out in the, in the parking lot, like saying goodbye. And we were both like, I'm an all in friend, want to do life together. And we like felt a little embarrassed, like saying that. And now looking back, we were like, no, that was that part of our soul that was just like blurting out like the truest desires of what we were looking for and just like praying that the other person would receive that. And so, yeah, for me a year ago, I was like, ah, oh, I just really want those people that make me feel safe and, and like expansive and that I can do all of the things with and it's beautiful to now be sitting here a year later and feel like 
I'm living that exact thing. So mm-hmm. I think we align in a lot of ways where I was looking for the same things like a year ago. Mm-hmm. I'm curious how you felt on the other end. I was going to say, let me that. go right off, right off that one. Yeah. I feel like we were coming out of a really, a year ago, we were coming out of, no, and I were coming out of a really tough living situation um, that was just really hard for us. We felt really isolated. Mm-hmm. We had no one. We had no friends. Um, prior to that, um, you know, we had just had each other for years and years and years. And, and we had just moved to <laughs> we Las just Vegas. Moved, so so we, yeah. we were fresh to Vegas. Mm-hmm. We'd been here for like nine months um, before we moved in. And we were just like praying for community. And I think that when we had that moment in the coffee shop, when we got kicked out because they closed, like we were there for so long that they were like, you need to leave. Um, it was kind of like, I was like, honestly, like I've been through, I've been through it. Like I've, I've been to the depths of my burnout. I've been to the depths of my depression and I might as well just say it. Like I might as well just say, I want to be all in. I want, I want this friendship. I want this depth. I want love. I want connection. I might as well say it. Cause like, what do I have to lose? I I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, everything is new here. So uh, I think that's kind of why we, we just had that moment where we were like, Let's just do it. Like, yeah. let's just, let's just be like really close friends. Cause I think we were just, it was just the, the perfect aligning moment. Mm. What you don't mm-hmm. realize is what that is. The, that is the seed that gets planted. That is the birth of something that you have no idea what's to come. But in the expression of that truth and the vulnerability that's required to say that thing. Yeah. Because you can only have an authentic, deep, intimate relationship with somebody from a place of vulnerability you know and what we do as friends is we get as close as humanly possible outside of sexual relations (laughs) where it's like (laughs) we're gonna get this close because we want to be this Mm -hmm. close because Mm -hmm. so many of us at least i know for myself and like i know for you guys like there have been so many moments in our life where we felt alone Mm -hmm. and that's like a, it's a dark place. And I know so many people that listen to this show. I mean, the feedback from last week's episode alone is like, this spoke so high, like so strongly to me because this is where I'm at. And Mm -hmm. people that are going through that process right now of disconnecting from hard situations where it's like, this is all I've ever known is people Mm -hmm. that meet me on a, on a surface level basis, you know, where I have to be a version of myself to belong and how belonging is such a primal need for all of us and how much we take and settle for table scraps because we think that that's mm. all we'll get, you know, mm-hmm. 47% of Americans say that their social connections are not meaningful. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's one well, out of every two people mm-hmm. are, say, that, say that, say that, say <clears> that. <throat> and the thing is, is this is from the roots of loneliness project and they surveyed people. So it wasn't just, it wasn't, like they were, they were just asking people mm-hmm. like, are your social connections meaningful? And one out of every two people said, no, they are not. It's tough. That's terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a really tough place to be yeah. mm-hmm. because it almost makes you feel as though, and this is where I spent so much of my life prior to us having a community is I spent so much of my life feeling as though I was surrounded by people, mm-hmm. but none of them, either, none of them either saw me or wanted to see the, the authentic expression of me or, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was almost as though I felt so, like tolerated, mm-hmm. but not welcomed in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And that is, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's such a difficult, it's such a, because, because I think to what, what Cam was saying is, is there's a very distinct difference between isolation and solitude mm-hmm. there is Absolutely. a massive massive difference and i think if in in the isolation camp if your social connections are not meaningful if you don't feel if you only feel tolerated if you don't actually feel as though you can show up and, and express yourself then mm-hmm. it makes sense that you would choose to isolate yourself mm-hmm. which is almost like a it's almost like osmosis where it just be, it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and you're just like down the rabbit hole we go yep mm-hmm. yeah I mean, you think about the culture that we live in, like modern Western Civ, and then the culture that we're trying to build, you know, within our friend group and our community and through Revive and through everything that we're building, they're like very different cultures. You know, I think about Western, you know, our mainstream culture is like, we're obsessed with our phones. We're disconnected. Mm -hmm. We're living for the weekend, essentially. When people gather together, it's for 
a sporting event or a concert or for inebriation mm -hmm. or rage, essentially, or like we're doing some kind of protest or something like that's why people gather together. And what mm -hmm. we're saying is like, how many times have before we started doing what we're doing with intention and creating spaces to like go deeper and to see each other and to know each other, like, did we walk into rooms full of people, but we didn't know they didn't know our name. You know what I mean? Or like how many times do people gather and they're like, but it's not personal. It's like, I don't know your name. I can't go up to you and give you a hug. Mm -hmm. It's like, or I go to a class or I go to a workshop and mm -hmm. we still are isolated. You know, I go to a conference and I'm just mm -hmm. going and getting what I need and leaving versus really intentionally connecting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a culture that doesn't look at each other. Like we eye avoid contact. eye contact. Yeah. 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 We get That's in a, huge. we get in an elevator and, and we say some like polite niceties of like, how are you? And it's like, I'm fine. And that's the extent of our connection. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why we feel empty, you mm -hmm. know? It also makes me think of how there's so many retreats. And my question is always, what are we retreating from? Because if, if you talk about connection, oftentimes you'll, you'll have all of these people congregate at like a retreat so to speak, right? Okay, so we're retreating from our everyday lives and then people will connect super deeply, like tons of eye contact, huge breakthroughs, amazing. And then it's like everybody just disperses and goes back to their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think for, for us and kind of what we're looking at creating is the question is, why do we have to retreat to have those authentic connections? Like why do we have to retreat from our everyday life to go into a space and connect with each other? I can't just be the standard. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. It's funny you say that because a lot of the things that we do together are things that, people create for retreats or retreats Absolutely. because it's like a level of a depth of connection mm -hmm. that you curate mm -hmm. at a retreat that we are curating in our everyday lives, mm -hmm. like over dinner or on a Sunday afternoon. Like we mm -hmm. do those things together, which is bringing our daily life into the format of a retreat. Yeah. So then when we go to retreats, it's like a depth, I don't even just know. Just more of the same. We need to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, it's just like there's a need to upgrade the quality of your life, like, and make it a regular standard for yourself, mm -hmm. right? Instead of running away or waiting for that two weeks vacation time out of the year to get away and then come back and go back to the same miserable cycle, like, upgrade your connections, upgrade the way you approach life. Yeah. And you can change the quality altogether. And there's nothing to run away from ultimately after that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think about, you know, when I found Nikki. Mm. And there was something about her and her level of presence with me that made me feel seen. And there was a no, like a knowing that if um, in order for this to be something that matters and that can grow into something real, it will, it requires me to allow myself to be myself mm -hmm. <laughs> so that I can be in relationship with Nikki, not where Nikki's in a relationship with the mask or the filter that I am presenting the, my, mm -hmm. my, you know, the presentation mm -hmm. that I have shown. And, you know, for me, I think we all get to a point where we're, more comfortable with showing up as our authentic selves in different ways and connecting to like, what is that true for, for me? It started with like, I had to leave my everyday life and go on a retreat. Mm -hmm. Like that was my experience yeah. because everyone in my normal environment mm -hmm. reminded me of who I'd been. Mm -hmm. And that was a person that was lost. That was a person that was confused mm -hmm. and disconnected and disassociated and depressed. And so I needed to get out of my environment as a way of seeing, is there something else? Is there another way? Mm -hmm. And on that retreat, I connected with myself in a way that was so mm -hmm. meaningful and so in depth. I was like, okay, now I have a new reference point for what I'm looking for and what's possible. And my desire is to go out and create that at home. Mm -hmm. But it, it's really, it, then you go back to the same people that you were with mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I don't, th they have not had the same experience that I've had, which is now I've connected to this truth of mine. Like they're very okay with the way things have been 
and now I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so I can either morph into who I like go back to who I was, or there's this journey of like kind of that separation and walking alone for a little while to find your people. And, Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of us were afraid to be alone. We're afraid to take that time for ourselves because it's like, I would rather be alone. I, I remember I was like, I would rather be alone and do my own thing versus be in friendships and relationships that don't feel authentic. Because once you've connected to your own truth, to go against your truth and to feel what that feels like within your body, I mean, watch what happens when you start to deny that truth. And that's a painful feeling where I was like, I'm not willing to numb myself Mm. of this under of this awareness in order to still fit fit into an old environment Mm -hmm. so i remember like leaving atlanta and being like i'm gonna i'm gonna go on my own and i started traveling solo but the intention that i carried in my heart was like i am calling in people that can meet me and know me because the fear was like will i ever really truly be known Mm. Hmm. you know And it first starts with like, can I know myself? But if I don't know myself, then I can't let someone else truly Mm -hmm. know me, you know? And then the vulnerability that comes with that of like letting yourself be seen and the process of, you know, growing into all that you are because it doesn't happen all at once. (laughs) You know, we're still doing that in connection with each other. Yeah. 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 It makes me think back to the second episode that we did about friendship where we were talking about masks and you have, there's a level of like braveness that you have to step into to release those masks Mm. and to be seen. And because if you're still wearing the masks to the external world, you won't meet that authentic connection because it's not in congruent. It's not an energetic mass match. Mm -hmm. So there's like, if you're out there and and you're like, okay, I've had this retreat. I've seen that now I want to be part. Like I I want something different. I want to experience myself. You've done the inner work. And now you're like looking to then go external and call in those people. One of the biggest first questions you need to ask yourself is, can I, can I be brave? Like, can I be brave to step forward in the world without these masks that I've been used to wearing for years? Mm -hmm. And can I show more and more of my authenticity? I mean, that's what I felt like when uh, the more we deepened into friendship was like, it was a practice of, can I release this mask? Okay. I found one person now I can release my masks in front of. That was like a practice. Mm -hmm. And then I got to, together, we Mm -hmm. got to continually practice that. And then I remember when I met you guys in the coffee shop, it was like, I was, I talked about it on the last, I was like terrified to be like, here's in my number. Like, it was so scary, but it was like, mm-hmm. why? Mm-hmm. But because it was a moment of vulnerability of me releasing my masks and being like, this is me and this is what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. And if, but like, I don't know that we would have the relationship that we would have if I wasn't brave to test the water of like, can I be, am I safe in front of this person without this mask? Okay, am I safe in front of the per- this person without this mask? And it's like a, you know, a cycle of a practice for well, sure. And when you, you know, initiated that friendship with you guys, you didn't have evidence that they were safe people yet. No. Like, so part of that is vulnerable. Like mm-hmm. you're stepping out and risking something. And, but- in all love, which we all have, love each other deeply, it's like there's an inherent risk in that. Oh, yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And but is it worth that risk of being rejected or being laughed at or being whatever misunderstood? But there's also that is the doorway to also being met and being received. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so both things exist in that unknown when you're stepping into it. But it's like with without it, we just stay in our comfort zone and we continue to do what we've done. So I want to ask you guys individually, like what does authentic connection mean to you? I think authentic connection for me is just really being able to just be raw with each other and not in a rude way or anything like that, but just be able to check each other when necessary. And 
have those really hard conversations, right? Uh, in in the in the softest way possible, depending on what it is, um, because you genuinely love that person or those people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just have, being able to check each other when necessary, having those genuine deep conversations, and expressing yourself exactly like, hey, if you you kind of threw me off today, like, okay, so let's talk about it. Why did I throw you off? Just being able to deep dive into yeah, deeper conversations of, of what really went mm. what really happened in that space, why you feel a certain way, and how can we move forward and fix this? You know what I mean? I mean, I've had I've had those conversations with all of you almost. Mm -hmm. Maybe with the exception of Noah. I don't know if like you and I have had like a, a tiff that we had to have like a clearing conversation, yeah. but everybody else, like we've had to do that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I think it's the testament of a real friendship yes. that you're able to mm -hmm. be honest. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the fact that like we as a as individuals value truth mm -hmm. as one of the highest things like in our personal lives, it's like truth is at the core of what we want to cultivate. And we like, if that's true, then we can't hide, you know, hide from mm -hmm. what we're experiencing, hide from what we're feeling, mm -hmm. but we bring that to each other in love and say, Hey, this is what I'm, this is where I got triggered or this is what I'm experiencing or this is, ch I'm ch being challenged with this mm -hmm. and I'm looking at my own process and I want to share with you about what's coming up. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I, I love what you said about that. Cause I think it is like, a, you know, last week I gave some tips for like, how can you identify mm -hmm. if you're in relationships that need to be reassessed? And I think that's one. Yeah. It's like, can I be honest? Mm -hmm. Can I bring my truth? Do we, do we collectively value truth over um, comfort? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and, Cause friendship isn't friendship and relationship. It's not always comfortable. Right. It's not always easy. Something that I keep thinking of is the phrase, you don't fall in love. You choose love every mm -hmm. day. And mm -hmm. I feel for us in this group, it's we choose every day to show up more authentically, to show up more as ourselves, to be more honest, um, you know, in truth. And, um, the standard that we set for each other is I don't want you to show up in a mask. And if you show up in a mask, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I don't, there's no excuse. I have to show up as myself. I have to go out of my comfort zone. And sometimes that is uncomfortable, but mm -hmm. the amount of growth that we have all experienced in this container of friendship is just like unmatched. Like mm -hmm. I've, I've never grown so much in what, nine months, six months. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> Yeah. When we've gotten to know each other's truths as well to the point where we can call each other out mm -hmm. and be like, uh, I don't think that was your fullest expression. Or I think right. that you're maybe hiding something maybe from yourself. I know that that's a big thing that you a big um, point that you've been in my life of I, I don't even realize I'm hold, I'm wearing a mask or I don't even realize mm -hmm. I'm being inauthentic. And you'll you'll notice that mm -hmm. and be able to check me. And then I'm like oh, wow, you're right. But like, that's an authentic connection yep. to me is being ex able to identify yep. when I, something that I maybe it can't even identify mm -hmm. because you've gotten to know my truth to the point that you can feel the, uh, the misalignment. Mm -hmm. Or even to be able to ask like, is that, is that really true for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not that I know best, you know, because like, you know yourself better than I do. Mm -hmm. And, but we can offer each other that reflection because we're mirrors, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. each other. <clears throat> and because it's safe, because we know we're loved, because we know that that's coming from a place of wanting you to have your, be in your mm -hmm. fullest expression and be, feel most liberated versus the way we could perceive that as like, oh, this is a critique. Oh, mm. I'm doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. It's like, because of the way we, what we've built in terms of the way we relate with each other, there is a level of trust mm -hmm. that if you bring something to me, I can trust that maybe there's something here that I get to explore with curiosity mm -hmm. versus take it as a, you know, as a judgment that makes me then provides evidence that I'm less than, or I'm inadequate, or I don't belong, or that I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of us, if we've had hard conversations with friends in the past, we immediately, you know, 
project our past experiences on it and be like, oh, well, that means Mm -hmm. this about this person or, um, and how that becomes the wall between each other for, to authentically relate. Well, an authentic connection requires a level of safety. Mm. Um, Mm. We've all talked about that. Um, Of what, how do you do that? How Mm. do you create a level of safety? And I think you, we can't be that fullest expression if we feel like there is a level of critique. The only reason you would think that that would be a critique is because you don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I know uh, that I feel safe in our authentic expressions and connections with each other because I know that I I know that there is no motive Mm -hmm. or that the intention is pure. Mm -hmm. The intention is from a place of curiosity and genuine desire for us to be in our authentic expression. So I think that's another big point of authentic connection is the level of safety that you can create. I think it's also just like a, an ability to support each other rather than being in competition with each other. Mm. Like the, Mm. uh, what would people call it? Crabs in a bucket. When somebody's, somebody's making it out of the bucket. Now everybody that's not, and as, as at the lower level is going to drag them back in. But when you're in a group of authentic people, people that are aligned and and really deep in their own spaces, we want to support each other. We want every, each individual to rise essentially, right? There's no competition. I support you and what you're doing. And yeah, let's, let's rise. Right. That's how it should be collectively at least. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What does authentic connection felt like? What does it feel like when you find it? What is it meant to you? Like, what is it, how has it shifted? Um, like, what does that look like? How are you able to express yourself now, Noah, that you, maybe you weren't before? Something I've come to understand is that perception is projection. Mm. And so in terms of safety, love, honesty, trust, truth, it comes from an understanding of your own perception of other people. <laughs> and <laughs> from from that place you can under and and when you under i think understanding yourself allows you to pr- push like project that into the world and mm. so for for me in the past i had a level of self understanding and a level of connection with myself but the problem was when i would sort of show that to the world right when i would when i would just just be myself right when i would uh, when i would bring that to the world. It was, it was met with everything that you don't want to be met with Mm -hmm. everything that is everything that causes you to sort of like close and be like, it's not safe for me out here. It's not, you know, I'm not all like all of me is not welcome Mm -hmm. because other people are projecting their perception back onto me and Mm -hmm. it's not good Mm -hmm. because I think in, in a lot of ways there is such a dislike use, like you said, there's such a disconnection of self in, in our culture. We're not, we're not, it's, I think it's like an endless debate that you could spend hours on of how do you connect to yourself? Mm-hmm. How do you actually connect to your true self? And, mm-hmm. and who is that? And what is that, right? So I think because there's such a lack of understanding in people of this is who I am, it creates an insecurity. Mm-hmm. And as soon as, and, and so, so for, for me to express authentically to people was almost intimidating. It was triggering. It was, um, you name it, right? Because they would, I, I would be met with, Stop doing that. Don't do that. Oh my God, what's wrong with mm-hmm. you? Be quiet, sit down, like cut it out. You know what I mean? And, and I think that comes from a, a deep insecurity yeah. in a lot of people's egos because they don't mm-hmm. know them. They don't know themselves. And so for somebody to show up and say, well, I have a pretty good, I'm taking a pretty good crack at it. And even if I'm not there, you know, I'm, I'm giving it the old college try. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people that is very difficult. And so to be on the other side of that now, and that was, and, and I think that also that being in that place of being afraid and being not welcome leads to isolation Mm -hmm. and, and isolation is such a tough place to be because. Yeah, Yeah, it is because I mean, if you grow up your whole life and your conditioning is it's not safe to be yourself Mm -hmm. because if you do, you're punished. If you do, you're judged. If you do, you're ridiculed, you're laughed at, you're Mm -hmm. excluded, excluded, Mm -hmm. you're too much. Mm-hmm. Right. Then what do we learn as children? Oh, well, it's I'll watch everybody else. You know, I know that for you, it was like, mm-hmm. I'll let everybody else have fun. Mm-hmm. But that's not for me. Like mm-hmm. these things that we admire or desire. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll either we'll go seek that out or because it's so painful that we don't have it. We're like, that's not even possible. 
we will judge it and we'll be like, oh, that's for everybody else or that like it doesn't mm-hmm. even exist to have authentic connection or to have friendships like this. Like, cool, that works for them, but that couldn't work for me. And so mm-hmm. as a way to feel better about the fact that we don't have it or that we haven't been able to experience that for ourselves. And, you know, when you get around people, we had this reflected to us yesterday, like at Revive Breathwork, mm-hmm. somebody was like, you know, <laughs> the thing that I I feel so deeply is them is yes, this was a powerful experience and yes, I got so much out of it, but it's the love that's in this room Mm -hmm. and the love that we feel and how that for me, like that's the greatest compliment you can give because that's what we want to be known for and what we're building. But it's like when you get around people that deeply and truly love each other it can freak people out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not normal. unfamiliar. It's yeah. so unfamiliar. It can be such a deep shock to the system because they've mm-hmm. never had an example of that in their life. Mm-hmm. And we'll watch people come into our spaces and just be stunned mm-hmm. because it's their first interaction with mm-hmm. people in a, a space where we're coming up and getting hugs and we're like holding each other and, and and for a moment merging in each other's energy fields and we're so excited to see one another and you can feel people come into those spaces and like give you a side hug and being like oh. and they're like <laughs> never been here before but like interested but yeah. unsure you yeah. know um about what's going on here because it is so unfamiliar to most people mm-hmm. it's also I think some of the spaces that we create are the first experience that people have had with that Mm -hmm. love and that level of connection where it's safe and it's welcome. And when was the, when was the last time aside from, you know, the five of us that, you know, I guess to people listening, when was the last time you walked into a room and somebody said, all of you is welcome here. Mm -hmm. I take the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever you, whatever you call it. Like just you are welcome here Mm -hmm. and be genuine and be, and and really mean it. But I think it comes from, I think that comes from a place of self-confidence and, and understanding yourself. And because I think from that place, you're able to celebrate, like you said, Alex, to celebrate other people. You're able Mm -hmm. to celebrate each other and say, Oh, I'm not in competition with you because your authentic expression is different from mine. And all I have to do is like you say, Cam, all I have to do is sit in my assigned seat. Like I came into this game of life with an assigned seat. And the sooner that I find that and I can sit down and understand that all I have to do is really connect to myself. And then from that place, be myself. It's it, it becomes so much less stressful and I don't have to judge or shame or put Mm -hmm. other people down because it's a waste of my time and energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's a ripple. Like those people in the room, they feel the way that they do because of how we as a collective have created the space, but we as a collective created the space because we as individuals created the space within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it really all does like begin with us, Mm -hmm. like begin with the individual Mm -hmm. because then it, once we feel safe, then we go outward and then we find the group and then we curate. And it's so it's like, if this, if you're like, if you're watching this and this kind of connection is like what you're looking for, know that it like, you're the one that has the power. Like it all really does start with you. It makes me think of like how much power comes from being your authentic self and how everything will start to align and kind of fit together in your little puzzle piece, the tapestry of your life. Because you're, when you wear a mask, you almost resist the things that are naturally coming for you. So you're like, oh, I can't do that. That's not right. And you have all this fear and you have all this, you know, you're unsure. But it's like when you start to make those choices for yourself, for you, not for anybody else, but for you, watch how things start to fall into place. Mm-hmm. You know, I, when we moved here, I was like, I want deep connection. I want real friends. And when you and I, you know, met. And then it was like, we met and then we met. And then it was just like, Mm -hmm. things just started to fall into place. And then it's like, we, you look down the road and now we're at revive and now we're helping do all these things. And it's like, because we chose that for ourselves, because we chose every day to show up authentically Mm -hmm. and with love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that Mm -hmm. requires you to, to look at for people who are like listening is like, ask yourself, where am I showing up inauthentically in my life and start there because part of authenticity is like, we're having, we're, you know, we're talking about all of this. It's like, what does that look like in our lives? And like, for me, you four have seen the best 
am the worst of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like when I say authenticity, that doesn't mean I get to only bring the, mm-hmm. my best mm-hmm. qualities yeah. right. to the relationship. And like that's, and you get to love the best parts of me. It means you get to see all of me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, especially with like you two, mm-hmm. I mean, with you, all of you actually, but like in different ways, I have called on you in my darkest of darkest of darkest moments, my most shameful, my most depressed, my most sad, broken moments over the past year. And what I was met with, which is scary to do, Mm -hmm. you know, is to allow someone in to your most vulnerable space Mm -hmm. and to share the depths of your heart and what happens in those moments where you bring that and you're, you're received. It has shown me that all parts of me are lovable. Like the parts I think are shameful or that are going to disqualify me from good friends and good people Mm -hmm. that will make me not worthy. Mm -hmm. It's shown me the opposite. And yes, that comes with a price tag of being utter, like experienced, deeply vulnerable because I can't have that unless I'm willing and not everyone deserves to see the, all those parts of you, but you guys have earned the right Mm -hmm. to, to know and to see that and to get access to that because of who you are Mm -hmm. and because it is a safe space. And Mm -hmm. I've had to check myself and I've had to walk myself through that process of like, Oh, is this a part of me? I'm not willing to share. Oh, is this a part of me that I'm going to keep private because Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, I think it's wrong or bad or so shameful. You and I've had conversations where it's been so hard to say the thing that needed to be said, Mm -hmm. but the, the depth of intimacy and connection that has been on the other side of having that hard conversation shows me that's why truth is the North star. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. if there's a, you know, think about for those at home, like if you allow yourself, have the courage to write down your most vulnerable, shameful, like deepest, put your heart on a page and say, this is where I'm like, is there anybody in your life that you feel like you could share that with? Mm -hmm. And if not, That's okay, but there are people that you can cultivate relationships where that is is safe. Mm-hmm. And that's what we mean when all of us is welcome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that's mm-hmm. really what it means. Yeah. And we go through iterations of learning and peeling back those layers. Because mm-hmm. it's not like all of this happened overnight. It's mm-hmm. been a continuous, like, growth yeah. process for all of us. Mm-hmm like in our expression and our authenticity and our vulnerability. And like over time, the trust is built, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. it doesn't happen right out of the gate. You don't deserve that level of access right away, Mm -hmm. but in time it grows and it grows and it grows. And I think that's why, you know, people feel the level of love that we have for each other Mm -hmm. when they experience us together, because it's not surface level. Yeah. Yeah. When we say we love each other, like we mean that. Mm-hmm. Yep. When we say family, we mean family. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think it's go ahead. I think that's what the both of you mean when you say we're going to do life together. Yeah. yeah. It's not like, oh, we're gonna just, you know, which hang can out be messy. And, it mm-hmm. is, is messy. That's exactly mm-hmm. it. But yeah. that's the point. And I think also as you do life together is where that trust is built. Mm-hmm. You have maybe some hard conversations, maybe you have some difficult, maybe Mm -hmm. you go through something and your friends are supporting you and that's where doing life together builds that trust of, okay, you know, maybe it's not your, you know, your darkest hour or like your absolute rock bottom, but maybe it's halfway there Mm -hmm. and somebody's still there for you. And then you go through one or two of those and then you come to a point where you feel safe Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. show up and say, listen, I'm at rock bottom. Mm -hmm. It also makes me think of, the flip side of that, which is like, can you hold me in my joy? Mm-hmm. Can you hold me in my, mm-hmm. in my ecstasy? Mm-hmm. You know, can you like, mm-hmm. maybe not that way, but in like, <laughs> we're not doing that. Um, but can you, can you hold me at my, at the top? Yeah. Can you celebrate me? Can you lift me up? Can you, you know, can you be there for me when I'm winning? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think we kind of touched on that 
earlier when you were like, we're not in competition, but it's like, I think also mm. as we go through these journeys of healing and like unraveling, it's, there's joy on the other side of sadness and grief. And sometimes that feels weird and to, to feel that it's, and maybe it feels unsafe, but to have a group of people where you're like, I can, I can completely unravel to the depths of my psyche and also to, you know, the heights of ecstasy of whatever that looks like for you. Mm -hmm. And to know that you're held in all of those ways and you don't have to minimize in any way. Yeah. Because notice if who you share your wins with and who you're afraid to share mm -hmm. your wins with, because you know, it, they're going to either be like, try to one up you mm -hmm. or they're going to try to diminish it or they're going to be upset or triggered by it or, you know, whatever it means. I, I think it was like, I can't remember if it was Jordan Peterson or who, who was like, he's like, notice who you're afraid to share your celebrations with. Mm -hmm. It's like you come into, you know, you get a new client or you make a lot of money or you, I, you win an award and you're like, I'm just going to keep this to myself. Or like, I don't want to share this with anybody to make anyone else feel mm -hmm. less than it's like, well, if that's the case, you're, you're around some really weak minded people. Yes. You know what I mean? Who'd, and, you know, just to circle back to a quote that I've said on the show before, is like, the opinions of other people matter to the extent that you don't know yourself. You know what I mean? And when you really know yourself, people's opinions start to matter less and less. But again, it's still, there's like moments of like, I know like right now you're still like, thinking about where does, where do other people's opinions really matter to me? Mm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And how does that still have a, a hold on my own self-expression and the way I want to show up genuinely in the world? Like, can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah. It's a can of worms I've opened for myself. Um, the, because the deeper that we go together in friendship and in the community that we're building in revive something that we are now we have decided to tell each other, all of you is welcome here. And I don't mean tell each other like we do. That's just something we say we've experienced that. Mm -hmm. And now as we're building this community and this culture, we're thinking about the things that matter to us that are pinnacle in building a community. And that's one of the things that we've decided is that, it's a safe place where all of you is welcome here, which has allowed me to peel back the layers of, okay, well, what part of me am I not showing or what part of me am I not expressing? And one of the biggest things for me was joy because along my path of life, I learned that my joy was not okay, was not safe to express, um, to bottle that back up. Mm -hmm. And so I'm learning in this community and in this friendship that we've created, oh, oh yeah, this is safe for me to express this joy. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. How, how do I want to express my joy from a place of truth, from a place of authenticity? And when you create friendship and community that is a safe place, it allows you to explore those parts of yourself mm. and, and to be curious and to just live mm -hmm. in, in a place of safety. And, oh, do I care what people think? I, I don't. I know that I'm safe to show up in any crazy, the craziest of possible ways. I could present myself to you guys and you'd be like, love it. Go Nikki. <laughs> she could wear like, a pink <laughs> wing. <laughs> pink yeah. at a party and we're like, that's our girl. That's our girl. We're There's here you. For it. Yeah. And that has made me realize I don't need to just keep that to the five of you. Mm, right. And now that we've built this like bigger community, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm safe also in this community. So it's like pushing my edge of, okay, well, I'm I'm safe in this container and now I'm safe in this larger container. But what I'm really asking myself is why do I need a container at all? Like, mm. can mm. I just be fully expressed in the world as I am? And I love that curating authentic connection has led me to that place of exploration mm. and curiosity because <laughs> it's bringing out the best parts of me that I had suppressed for so long. Well, and how do we access that? Like if you, for someone who's like, okay, how do I connect to my authenticity? 
my invitation is like, look at what you liked as a child. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. You know, your inner child, like, and as you create, if it, if a child doesn't feel safe, like a child knows, wants to cry. Mm-hmm. It knows how to cry. How much, how much do we, as adults, do we stifle that expression? Mm-hmm. A child wants to dance. Mm-hmm. A child knows how to dance. But when, as adults, do we start to stifle mm-hmm. that? That's not okay. That's too much. That's weird. Right. Mm-hmm. And, I think the returning to the authentic self is the returning to that inner child yes. and, and w- allowing, creating a safe space where you can follow those desires and those curiosities. You know, I, I was doing some deep work this week and I was like revisiting, what did I love as a child? I love mm-hmm. to dance. What came natural to me? I love to make up plays. I love to be on stage. I love to perform. Mm-hmm. I love to have my picture taken and like mm-hmm. express myself through my clothing. And I, I had no, you know, I loved just to to be expressed and then over the years, like in middle school and high school, mm-hmm. how that like got stifled. Mm-hmm. And now I'm coming back to mm-hmm. it in so many ways. And you know, if a child doesn't feel safe to follow its curiosities, it won't. Mm-hmm. It will learn how to stay safe and continue to get love in whatever form that that's presented to them. Mm-hmm. And so for so many of us, it's like coming back to our childlike nature of mm-hmm. playfulness, mm-hmm. of joy, of of wearing the wigs and playing the dress up and, and doing the throat singing and doing, you know what I mean? Like the yeah. things that, drumming yeah. the drums, like yes. that we wouldn't, being the artist, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. And yeah. Singing the songs, playing the music that felt natural as children that we've been conditioned Mm -hmm. to believe is not part of the culture, which is so obsessed with forward momentum and progress. You know what I mean? We're just like, oh, that's not productive. Play is not productive. Mm -hmm. So we don't explore that. We're like trying it, you know, in the culture that we're trying to create with Revive and in our friend group and within our own lives is is returning to that childlike self. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think also in, in integrating that childlike self mm. uh, in because I actually had a huge realization and breakthrough recently, which was it, if, if I don't return to that inner child and listen to him and give him space and actually integrate him, what happens is I become enslaved to all of the ways in which I created behavior patterns that keep him safe. Mm -hmm. So it, it almost becomes like if, if you don't revisit that child and express what they desire to express, you will forever be enslaved to these behavior patterns that you developed when your authentic expression as a child was not welcome. Mm -hmm. When you had to choose attachment over authenticity when, and and mm-hmm. all of like for you, you mm-hmm. you learned I need to express my joy, but not all of it mm-hmm. because it's not safe, mm-hmm. right? So so you said okay, keep 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 some Bottle joy, it up. keep some mm-hmm. joy, right? Don't let it all out, right? So now you're 30, 31, and and now you're you're just realizing oh I'm still enslaved to this mm-hmm. to this pattern of not expressing all my joy, mm-hmm. and that goes to creativity, to, yes. mm-hmm. you know, all of the things that you said, it's mm-hmm. it, you, if you don't integrate that child and say, okay, I see you, what do you desire? Mm-hmm. What do you want? What do you have to say? What do you want to express? Yeah. What do you have to say? Mm-hmm. For, for so many of us, it's like, where do we feel stifled? It's like our voice. Mm-hmm. 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 We get caught up in conversations or trying to connect with people. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, I don't, I don't have words. I don't have language. I can't say the thing because it wasn't safe Mm -hmm. to be honest when you were a child Mm -hmm. or you would get in trouble or love would be taken away from you. And we're reprogramming. Like what happens is we reprogram that stuff in relationship with other people. And that is sometimes a messy process. We stumble through that process where it's like, this doesn't feel natural to me at all, but I know in order to cultivate the relationships I want, like, I'm going to, I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to get this wrong, but like, stay with me. I'm going to practice sharing mm-hmm. my truth in whatever form that comes. And it does get easier. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like every time that you share something authentically, it's like this terrible pain and this thorn in your side. And it's, oh my gosh, you can barely do it. It's like the more that you share, the easier that it gets. Mm-hmm. And then the more that people see you, the more that you feel like you belong and Mm -hmm. you don't have to, it's not so hard. You Mm -hmm. don't have to try Mm -hmm. so much. And then it's Mm -hmm. just like, and that's what we mean when we say unravel. It's like, at first you're like, oh my God, this is like, 
And then it's just like, you just start to come undone and it's beautiful and it's not painful and it's not mm-hmm. uncomfortable. Yeah. Cause you're returning back to a natural state, right? Where you were able to express and you just have to go through the layers and just rebuild that habit of, of owning that. And, and it really is freeing once you start to use your voice or whatever blocks you might be dealing with. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a weight off. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Really reprogramming. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. You had programming installed and then you go and you're like, Oh, this actually isn't my natural innate programming. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is, and mm-hmm. then sort of re- like reinstalling that programming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to talk about some of the things we do as friends that helps to um, inspire and support and encourage each other's self-expression and, like, creates intimacy and creates connection. Mm -hmm. Like, what are some of the practices that we do intentionally? Like, because this might sound like a a serious conversation, Mm -hmm. but we're also very not serious people. (laughs) Extremely. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Uh, we can get wild. Like mm-hmm. we Real love quick. to do the work. We love to have fun. We love every, like mm-hmm. all, we are full spectrum human beings yeah. here. <laughs> That's my favorite. So I want to like incorporate that. Like mm. let's talk about some of the things that we do, including like cooking together, sitting in tea together, mm. writing and sharing our writings mm-hmm. together. Like what have been some of the most meaningful things that have helped you that have felt like, Oh, Wow this is amazing. Like, I love, I love that we get to share this together. Music and dance. Yeah. Music and dance. Music and ecstatic dance has been so freeing for for me. Mm. Yeah. Because I love music. I Mm -hmm. love playing instruments and I love to, I know, like, like the little kid inside of me cannot get enough of it. Like making noise and that (laughs) allows people to like move and dance and express themselves. It's like mm-hmm. I'm all I'm yes. all about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly it, right? <laughs> like, like, fire me up! Like, it's like you know, just allowing that space for expression, mm-hmm. and and yeah. I think you know, of all uh, of all the things that humans have messed up that we've really missed the mark on, music is perfection. Mm-hmm. Music is absolute perfection. Mm-hmm. It's literally an expression of divinity mm-hmm. and to, to just allow that to express and to, mm-hmm. and to really just feel it. Okay. It's so example, beautiful. example. Yes. I remember being at y'all's house. So one of our rituals as a group is we love to do tea and tacos. Tea and tacos. Yes. Tea and tacos is one of yes. our favorite things to do. So good. And we sit on the floor and we have tea and we'll do our, like, our, like, they're incredible in terms of the way that they hold space for us to just all connect in mm-hmm. such a deep way with ourselves. And then we share like what came up for us and then we'll cook together and have a meal together. And I remember being at y'all's house and you put on heavy metal music yes. <laughs> and we all rocked out <laughs> in such a way. And mm-hmm. we're like, that was such a cathartic yes. release. Yeah. And you know, but we did it on purpose. Mm-hmm. Like that was the best thing. Like we mm-hmm. noticed this energy shift of like, yeah, this is it has getting been. a little heavy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like let's play. And some I was like, we gotta move this. We gotta move this. That's what I mean when I say yeah. music is perfection. Because yeah. no matter what you're feeling, you can move it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we knew yeah. in that moment that there it. was some heaviness, yeah. and it just you played that music in the way that we. And it then afterwards, and we good. were like, <laughs> "We're like, wow, I feel better." It was epic. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that definitely. was so good. I love that. I think I, w- I want to piggyback off what you said about the tea. That's probably been one of my favorite parts mm-hmm. um, of what we do as friends. And I'll tell you why. Is first because it's a beautiful. We, we sit in silence. That's something to note. How many it's, of your friends do you sit in silence? With? Gather together to for sit in hours. silence. Not just for like an hour. Not just yeah, like a yeah, yeah. Minutes. Me and I sit for like two hours. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yep. We've yeah. gone a little intense. Yeah, it's gotten a little <laughs> long, but. So we sit in silence and we have this internal experience as a collective, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're sitting next to each other and sometimes we're journaling. Sometimes we're just sitting in a meditative position and we're having this whole hour long plus internal experience. And then we get to the end and the silence breaks and we share, Mm -hmm. we share our intimate internal experience Mm -hmm. that we just had with each other that could have been 
full spectrum. We have talked about the full spectrum of like pain and we've talked about the full spectrum of joy Mm -hmm. and I might have had a full spectrum of joy and you might have had a full spectrum of pain and we hold space for whatever that was in that moment at that time and that has been such a transformative space for me to be what is it the empathetic witness Mm -hmm. it's like Mm -hmm. just the power of being witnessed Mm -hmm. in whatever it was in being oh my gosh I just had this breakthrough And that can be really vulnerable because that breakthrough could be something that is artistic or creative and hasn't Mm -hmm. yet been birthed into the world, but you need a place to have it be witnessed. And that has been one of my favorite things that we've done as a group is cultivate that safe place to not only explore for ourselves, but to then be immediately witnessed Mm -hmm. in what we've just learned or experienced for ourselves. It really bridges the gap between solitude and community. Yeah. Because in the experience, you're in essentially solitude because, mm-hmm. you know, the expectation is we're not talking here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're having our individual experience. And then after the solitude, you have that connection to mm-hmm. self and then you, you, uh, mm-hmm. you integrate express it. it. You yeah. express it and integrate it. Yeah. Which creates that level of vulnerability that we were talking about Mm -hmm. that allows for authentic connection and full Mm self-expression because we meet each other in those vulnerable moments of this is literally happening right now. Mm -hmm. Like I just had this breakthrough, this thought, this transformative, um, you know, journal session, whatever it was. And then I'm immediately witnessed the level of vulnerability that is created in that moment is like so sacred that just creates create has created i honestly if we hadn't had sat in tea that's how this all started actually oh my gosh, I remember that was day. we all sat together yeah. as a group in yep. tea oh my god and we were like yes, what just, we were like, happened? What just <laughs> happened i felt like a portal we opened created that day. Yeah, yeah, like, yes. all oh, joined oh, hands i forgot that happened. started the federation or whatever you call it. <laughs> shout out to the galactic federation <laughs> yes yeah, something yes. like that yeah, yeah, but in that moment, we're in the middle of the process. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the messy middle. Yeah. We're we're being held in the process. I mean, there have been so many days sitting in tea where I'm weeping, where the tears are just streaming down my face because I'm realizing I'm going through a rebirth or a death of some th- kind, you know, and or I uh, have a visitation from my inner child and and I'm touched, you know, or whatever it might be. And then I get to share it and it, it it's integrated and it grows roots and then it's, inc- it's supported and it's encouraged. Like Cam is one of the most prolific, beautiful, and both of you writers. Mm. I mean, it's stunning when you hear her words and, you know, I hope like at some point you'll like share some of your writing like on the show or wherever, like anytime because, and we get to witness that when you share Mm -hmm. and I hope you find that was like, that's encouraged. And it's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, do more of this. You know what I mean? Where it may be in the past where you've haven't had that reflected Mm -hmm. back to you. You keep those things private, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's been beautiful. about the self-expression is we've created the level of safety where it is safe for us to express and not only is it safe but we like are asked for more of it Mm -hmm. so like i know for me in the times that i've expressed or recently going through this dopamine dressing situation y'all are like yes (laughs) Yes. do more of that when noah's playing we hype each other up when noah's playing the drums we're like freaking hyping him up like give us yes. more like we yes. love it we love mm-hmm. it we're like yeah. loving to see more of cam's writing and more of alex's yeah. art like mm. it's just like please give me more mm. and that has been so beautiful to be like oh i know for myself it's like really that's how i feel when you guys want me to pray yeah mm-hmm. yes. like please pray and i'm like please. again like- <laughs> yeah what about you what do you enjoy that we do together? Uh, I'd have to say the tea ceremonies as well, just for the for the same reason, right? We we are there to again have our own experiences, but really support each other and help each other integrate those lessons that come from that mm-hmm. that uh, deep dive inside. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Um, I've gone through so many different layers of healing in that space, and obviously yeah. other spaces a lot deeper as well. But I mean, it's been just such a 
powerful catalyst to mm-hmm. be able to drop in with you guys. And I think also something that's very powerful for me that I love that we all have available to each other is I can, if I ever want to reach out to Tori and say, Hey, I need to drop in with you and we need to have mm-hmm. some conversations. I need mm-hmm. you to just hold some space for me. Nikki, mm-hmm. I need you to hold some space for me. Yeah. Cam, Noah. Yeah. And it's not a question, right? Yeah. And we'll be there we for each other. Up. Yeah. I think that's the most, most crucial thing for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. <laughs> I don't know who could answer this, but I'm curious because I feel like sitting in tea is a very unique thing that not everyone has access to or is excited about about. or even knows about. Yeah. That what could the people listening, I'm thinking about this for myself and just wanted to bring it up to all of you. What could be a similar space that people could hold Mm. with their close friends? Mm -hmm. That could create a similar environment. I think cacao is pretty similar from what I've experienced. Mm. Hape can be similar. Mm-hmm. Um, Gathering around a fire my, is yeah. something. Fire, absolutely. I mean, that's something I would do like with my dad or a couple of my cousins or normally with my family, right? And it's just like you don't even have to really have a Mm -hmm. consistent back and forth dialogue. You guys are just around the fire, having your own experience. And if you want to, you can Mm -hmm. open up the space for that. So that's simple. Everybody has access to a fire pit or something like that in their house. The thread that runs through everything that we do together is there's a component of some solitude. And then there's also the expression of that into into the community. So Mm -hmm. whatever it may be, if it's a fire, if it's cacao, if it's, Mm -hmm. you know, you want to just get together with your friends and meditate for an hour. (laughs) 30 mm-hmm. minutes, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it, it doesn't, mm-hmm. which I guess ultimately it's in it's intention. Yes. What's the intention yes. of the guest? Yes. And, the, and the container, yeah. you know, because yeah. so much of what we do feels ceremonial mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, making dinner or having a conversation or sitting outside or having tea or going on a walk, like all of those things can feel intentional and part of that container. If that's what you choose. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah. Because, you know, Everything that we, a lot of things we try to do together is bring us into the present moment. Mm -hmm. That is like one of the common threads Mm -hmm. versus what I was used to in friendship was like, let's get inebriated and disconnect from the present Mm -hmm. moment, right? And not be here. And we're saying, let's be Be here. here. (laughs) Bully. Right? Let's be here. And whether that's we're sitting in the park or we're going on a hike or we're making a meal together, all of the the commonality is like these things bring us more into connection Mm -hmm. versus disconnection Mm -hmm. from each other and from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so just be mindful, you know, if you're listening to this, it's like notice the types of gatherings you go to or like the times you connect with your friends. Mm -hmm. Is it to complain, you know, to complain and gossip and to talk about what's going wrong, or is it just to, you know, the ways you connect is only through <laughs> fantasy football and, you know, getting drunk on the weekends, mm-hmm. no offense, but at some point, like some people can do that their whole lives and will do that their whole lives and they're fine. But like, if there's part of you that wants something else, mm-hmm you're not the only one, you know what I mean? There are other people, even if you think, oh, no one likes what I'm into. Mm-hmm. Like Cam and Noah could have easily been like, oh, no one's, we love tea, but no one's probably gonna like tea the way we mm-hmm. like tea. No, but they brought that into the friendships they were in and they were like, hey, we would like to show you something that, that matters to us. That, mm-hmm. And now it matters to all of us mm-hmm. <laughs> because they did that versus just assuming, oh, mm-hmm. so they're going to think this is weird or they're not going to like this. You know, if you're at home, and you're like, how can I create this at home? Think about the intention. What do mm-hmm. you want to experience? You know, Wolfpack and Revive and all of that came out of me getting tired of waiting for someone else to, to invite me into their mm-hmm. community. I was like, I'm going to create the thing I want to experience. Mm-hmm. And I trust that I'm not the only one that wants this, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Because there are however many billion people in the world, the likelihood of other people wanting something similar is high. And, but it goes back to, I have to be myself. There's like this quote going on around on Instagram. It's like, be yourself so that the people who are looking for you can, Mm. for you can find you. Mm -hmm. Because if you're being someone you're not, they're not going to know it's you. It makes me think that maybe another core part of authenticity is presence, because if you are not present with yourself, if you're living in the past and reminiscing, or if you're anxious about the future, 
how can you possibly connect with what you need right now? Mm-hmm. How can you possibly find the people that are going to connect with you right now, mm-hmm. today? So it's like cultivating that presence in your life and in your friendships can also help you find more of what you are looking for, what mm-hmm. your soul is looking mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think something else for people to consider um, while checking your friend group is being rooted in your own values, having values mm. for yourself. What's your why? Because we all have similar values. That's yeah. why we That's, yeah. find each other. Because if not, if you're not rooted in mm-hmm. yourself or your why or your values, you're going to settle for minimum, right? Mm-hmm. You're not going to be, you have nothing to set the standard for your circle. So just some things to consider. And you do a disservice to those people and also to yourself Absolutely. by pretending you have different values than you do. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, it's a very natural um you know, disbursement of, okay, these are my values. Okay. I'm going to go be with these people and these Mm -hmm. are your values. And then people naturally, Mm -hmm. you know, go to where they need to go and they Mm -hmm. surround by the people that they need to be surrounded by. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you have a facade or a mask of no, this, that's not, you know, whatever. It's like, that's when everything starts to get all Mm -hmm. janky and doesn't really make sense anymore because you're trying to control something that can't be controlled. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think to round out this conversation, just some of those highlight topics that we talked about is like, in terms of authenticity is how present are you? (laughs) Do you know your values? Are you willing to give up what has traditionally felt safe and been safe for what is safe? (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. are you willing to be vulnerable and risking potentially looking stupid or being judged for the opportunity to find true genuine connection and you know i think the theme too is as much as we you know we all are committed to doing our own personal work Mm -hmm. on ourselves Mm -hmm. and um there so we invite and raise each other up in that work and hold each other accountable because we want and we agree to that level Mm -hmm. of you know accountability and so what agreements have you like made or haven't made in your own life? Where are you unclear about what mm-hmm. you want, what you're willing to settle for, or what standard you have for yourself? Because mm-hmm. you will find that in the people that you're around. Like we're all mirror reflections of each other. Mm-hmm. And although we come from vastly different backgrounds and have vastly different experiences, we are a lot more alike than we are different, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it starts with you, mm-hmm. you know, all of us started with us individually making a choice to better ourselves and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, say no to things that aren't aligned so that we can say yes to what is. And so um, I just want to deeply say thank you. Thank you for your commitment to your own authenticity and truth and that in living that you give permission to myself and to everyone listening to do that and that it is safe to explore, you know, what really matters to you and to share that with the people that matter most to you. Because my life is so deeply, so deeply enriched because of all of you. And I'm grateful. And I want everyone listening to experience that and to know that depth of love and and connection. And, you know, if this speaks to you um, and if you're looking for these types of relationships, um, maybe you don't live in Vegas, maybe you do, like we do have Revive Las Vegas here locally. We're running events monthly that you can be part of. But if you are wherever you are in the world, you know, we also have ways you can connect with us. I run a program called Revive Women every single month. We have weekly calls where you can join and be part of a community of women that are like minded, conscious, doing this work. And, um, and then we also have in-person gatherings through Revive Women. So if you're interested in that group, uh, you can go to the show notes and, and join us every single Monday for our live calls, as well as our in-person gatherings. And these two men um, host a men's group called Warrior Heart that we'll also put the link to for all of the men out there who are like, how do I find other men <laughs> who are divine, masculine, real men, protectors, warriors of their family, and, you know, uh, of, you know, fighting for good, fighting the good fight every day, but also I need a space where I can come and be no. my authentic, genuine self, where your heart is a place you can do that. And so if you're interested in those two things, make sure to go to the show notes and find the links to how you can join. 
And we invite you just to continue to follow all of their journeys. We'll put links to their social media so you can get connected to them and and continue to follow what we're doing because Revive is just getting started. All of the mm-hmm. things that we're building and just, you know, y- these are friendships that will be forever, like, you know, last a lifetime. Mm-hmm. So we're, like you know, us. it's a crazy to think that we're <laughs> one year in. Who yes. knows, you know, where we'll be in a few years, but. Stay tuned to find out. (laughs) Um, But that's all for this week. We'll see you next week on the Coachable Podcast.